I, 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 don't, I don't appreciate that, Rich. I don't appreciate all right. that. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True, true. <laughs> Ooh, all right. Well, as Belinda and I battle it out for third, it's Fred and Richard at the top. Oh, no, I didn't start to She's good at this. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. At the top, battling for that top spot here in our second round right. competition. Obviously, the, the stakes are high. Oh, gosh. I messed up. Yeah, oh, oh, the no. pillar. I made it. 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 it might be all over. Oh, oh, I... oh no. wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. How... I don't know what's happening because you guys are behind me. No. Oh, the grass got me that time. Grass I is did. also bad. <laughs> all now. these terrains. I just went so high in the air. No, 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 no. Oh, I do not have the juice to make it across this terrain. Uh, Melinda. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll give this one to Rage. I'll give this one to Rage. I have attacked this land. I should have also restart. gave the uh, previous one to me, too. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you asked nicely, so, you know. True, true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Got Chris out of third. <laughs> uh, not All a great round for me. All right, let's go to our third and final map here and settle who the real champion is. It's going to be Richard. <laughs> All right, well, we're coming into the final rounds match now, the final track. Fred, you have been a contender for the number one spot here, but so far Richard's been getting the best of you. What's your approach to this track? He's he's fast, but not fast enough. I got this one. This one's kind of tricky, so I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty confident. Feeling good? You feeling yeah. spry? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I like it. Belinda, I think you're out in front of me. Could you please, like, not? Is that it? Is that, is that okay? I'm no. trying Keep to get going, your little... No, nope. nope. <laughs> right on my tail. <laughs> We're all pretty close. Oh, crap. We are. These, these little bumps big bumps in this track <laughs> are very hard to maneuver over. Oh yeah. This this raise, uh, it's like, it's banked if you hit it from one direction, but then if you go over the hump, it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be a little trouble. Ooh, you just gotta oh, believe. God. You just gotta oh, believe. Man. Keep it, keep it going. All right, Chris and Belinda, I'm gonna need you both to beat Fred, please. <laughs> nah. <laughs> oh, you're gonna recruit us. Uh, yes. Right. <laughs> now we're all gonna teaming go up. Flying off the track right at the beginning. Here. Wow. <sighs> the pressure's on. I mean, on. his gamer tag is "You Be Rich." Is that a promise? If we comply? <laughs> yes, it absolutely is. You yes, will be absolutely. rich. You will be rich. <laughs> be rich in satisfaction that Richard won. I guess. Yes. <laughs> I'm gonna oh, take I'm gonna take a number one spot at least once during this take it, dang Chris. broadcast. Ugh. I'm happy no. with three. Oh, I like oh, the bronze. Man. Happy I'm with the happy. bronze. <laughs> he is up there. Yeah, I don't know how he's doing that. Ooh, it's just, I told you, you gotta talk to your vehicle. Oh no 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 it's a bad one. This one. I, I don't know. This could be a close one. These points are adding up. That was a big bite. Rich down in third. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> Here we go. This is going to settle Slow it. Slow and steady. Slow and steady in the back. <laughs> <laughs> Taking the scenic route. Taking the scenic route. Take our take our viewers on a, a lovely journey here. Oh, gosh. Ooh, little hippity hop. Oh, think about no. those. Just think about those hippity hops. Too scared to go off the track. I don't know how you guys avoid it. Fearless. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh, I mess up right there every single Good. time. I'm getting quiet because I really want to get a first place finish on at least one of these races. Oh, no. Uh, great. Third, that's right. so bad. Thank ah. you, Chris. Oh, man. It's worse when you think. I can't believe I messed up again. <laughs> Ooh, I did it again. <laughs> oh, yes, 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 yes. Yeah, I, I was never really worried. I was never really worried. I, I, I always knew how this You're was going sweating. to end. His palms are sweaty. I, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I don't like Live this. Live ranking so. there. You be rich wins a match. GG. 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 Nicely done. Uh, all right, folks. That's going to bring our little... Uh, Let's play kind of competitive segment here to an end. Uh, I want to thank you all for participating. Uh, Belinda, nice work out there. I tried. I tried. I just love the scenery. I was just taking my time. Listen, <laughs> it's fun to get out there in a fast car and just do some things. I agree. I like Fred Carmichael, close, but no cigar this time around. Are you plotting your revenge already? <sighs> I'll, I'll get him next time. 
Richard, is there going to be a next time, or are you just going off into the sunset with this W? I mean, I'm definitely dropping off into the uh, the uh, sunset, but uh, even if there is a, a next time, I don't think he's going to beat me. <laughs> <laughs> and thus a rivalry is born, or maybe continued? Yeah. Yeah, yeah continued, definitely. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Thank you all for joining so much. Uh, folks, coming up next, we're going to be taking an in-depth look at the map editor and some of the creation tools in Trackmania. But first, let's do a little schedule check-in. After our Trackmania segment here, it's going to be the Ubisoft Forward pre-show at 11.30 a.m. Pacific time. 11.30 a.m. Pacific time, where we'll be seeing some AI teammates coming to Ghost Recon Breakpoint, getting an update from the crew too. Trials favorite and favorite and we'll see a whole bunch more games on display. Then at noon Pacific time, when that timer runs out, it's gonna be Ubisoft Forward, the main showcase, Watch Dogs Legion, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, some new announcements and more. Don't wanna miss that one. And after it's over, stick around for an in-depth look at Assassin's Creed Valhalla. That's all coming up here shortly. But now I've got Augustin DeVita, producer at Ubisoft Nadeo, the creators of Trackmania, joining me to talk about creation in Trackmania. Uh, Augustin, welcome. Hello, Chris. So happy to be here. Oh, man. Exciting times for you. you yeah. Your game has just launched. People are out there racing in droves. How does it feel? It feels great. I mean, it just feels great. Uh, the game is really, really good. It's really an evolution of Trackmania, and we couldn't wait for it. And also, folks are out there uh, creating stuff. We see yeah. right here, we, we're seeing some uh, map creation sped up. We got a little time-lapse thing pre-prepared for us here as we talk through the map creation mode. But I guess give us like an overview starting off, Augustin. Uh, like what's your, what was your team's goal when like putting these creative tools in the hands of players? Uh, so we always want the, the, the tools to be easy to, to handle. And uh, the big issue we were facing that there is too many blocks in the game. There is 1,600 blocks in the game, actually. And so we had to organize all the tools and to organize the new features. And he's doing a great job right now because he, he knows what he's doing. But when you start making the first map, you really don't know what where you're going to. It's really hard to get to. And, yeah, uh, I, when you say blocks. Really Sorry to interrupt, but when you say yeah, blocks, you just mean all these little pieces that we're seeing of track yeah. planted this way, that way, this terrain, that terrain. Yeah, that's how it works. Uh, if we if we um, every piece of the map is uh, what we call a block, so it's it's uh, some a size, and you can go like diagonal. You you have uh, roads, you have um, decoration, you have checkpoint, start, finish, you have boosters, and all of this makes a map. So there is so many blocks that there is an infinite an infinite uh, combination possible. All right, guys, welcome to gameaffine.com. And we are a group of people who are trying to bring the latest news out to you together and basically today we're going to be having fun together watching the Ubisoft event live, Ubisoft Forward. So if you don't know what the event is about, let me quickly give you a recap. Alright, so Ubisoft Forward is nothing but an event where Ubisoft will showcase their future and upcoming games, for example, the Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Watch Dogs Legion and many more games like that. They'll also give us some extra news which they haven't talked about and we have some speculation that the game might be Rainbow Six Quarantine or some games that even haven't been announced yet. So it's basically an E3 which is in the form of Ubisoft Forward. They would also be giving you free codes, free access and free stuff. If you head over to other sources other than Game of Fiend, which I would really not recommend you to, please, please have some chill with me. However, if you go to Ubisoft.com or watch the Twitch for just one minute, you can also get Watch Dogs 2 absolutely for free. So you guys can go chill around, can come back. All right, we, we, we guys will chill here together. Watch the stream. So make sure to drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And let's enjoy the stream together. The simple editor, editor is like a best of uh, of blocks. So the blocks you need to do like a, a, a simple track, but a good one. You can at least make a good one. And I recommend to start with this, and then after you can get to the to the advanced editor and make uh, crazy stuff like like he's doing right now. <laughs> nice. Now, is that advanced editor pretty akin to what the Trackmania team uses to create the actual tracks in the game? Yeah, it's exactly the tools that we are using uh, every day to make the track. Uh, we, every tool we put in the game, we 
give give it to the player as well, uh, so they can make the same track as us. Nice. So you can challenge people to beat you at your own game a little bit. Yeah, and sometimes they're better than us. Uh, they they do tracks that in, uh, amaze us. I mean, I I played some tracks that I always remember uh, uh, because it was so great. Well, that's when you hire them for the team, right? <laughs> yeah, it happened. It happened. We we hire a lot. Well, the guy doing the, the video right now is. He used to be a player, and he's still a player, and now he's working with us. And we always have like pro players coming uh, into the team, and and designers, and level designers. That's very cool. So, I mean, we're talking here about the Trackmania community. Then, you know, there are people out there going to be creating these tracks. If they they're creating the tracks, they want people to race on them. How are they gonna? How do they get folks in the seats? You know, to to race on their track. It, it's really simple with the with the next uh, Trackmania. Uh, because now, when, uh, once you're done with your track, you can just put it out there on what we call a server review, a map review ser server, and um, uh, they can, like, everybody can come up and test your tracks. They can rate your tracks, and when they rate it, they give it, for example, five stars. Afterwards, um, if your track is good for the players and we decide it's good, we're going to add it at what we call track of the day, which is like the front page of the game. And everyone is going to play it for sure. Uh, every day there is a new track. Sam is here. Players. Sam, welcome to the stream. Thank you nice. so much for joining. And in. so there's also, Ma but there is also that so like coming, server where and and drop can a any like, player just kind of go Sam in and be like, me, what do you let me see what new creations people have today and then rate them. Even so if you aren't your, excited for anything. If that's your thing, if you're looking maybe for inspiration or just game? looking to try uh, some wacky new tracks, that's what I love. And I know you're an assassin fan too. That's why I do always go to this server like every day and track the maps even if nobody is like pushing a map right now. There is always maps pushed earlier in the earlier in the day so you can say it's always tracks to test and new tracks to test it's really great nice and so if you get that so you get your track in there you get enough uh get enough stars get considered by the team and you select them as a track of the day then you know people are racing it and there's some incentives for people to get on that track as well right yeah the, every day there will be a what we call a competition a daily competition on this new track at 7 p.m Right. This competition rewards sure. what we call waiting, trophies and those trophies give main you uh, like a rank in, uh, global right. rank in Trackmania. So Abhi every day you have to Abhi come and if you want to come to compete on this track and then you can rank up in the game and you can rank up in the game and you can rank up in the game. So basically, all the best, right? Nice. And speaking of competition, we are going to be seeing some of the top community racers take on this very track here in just a few moments, folks, in our next segment. Uh, right now, we're talking with Augustin about uh, creation in Trackmania. And so far, we've focused on the, the map editor, the track creator that we're seeing in kind of a time lapse uh, fast forward here. But there's also other creative outlets. I mean, you can customize, for example, okay, the, the livery on oh your car. Oh, my God. Should, yeah, should you, I fix my mic? Because key Come in, uh, in key zada um, so you can create any skin yeah, you want zada, uh, with I what guess we skin painter. Oh, bhai, maksu, and oh, you can bhai, change it really easily uh, with the world, within clubs. Is my mic too loud? Uh, should I fix it? In just one click, you I'll, can I'll find new, some... new skins that you like edits. and you can uh, you can apply them or add them to your favorites. It's it's really changing. A second, you guys won't be hearing any audio for only a minute. Just hold on. I'm just checking my... etc but uh you know to a certain extent you give the tools to the players i'll reduce the volume and then watch it cool cool so tab tak apna time pass karne ke liye kya kar sakte ho top right pe tumhe codes dikh rahe honge ubisoft ke right so basically agar tum fast ho fast enough ho yes you do sir we can't hear you lamma so अगर तुम्हारा तुम्हारे पास जो बिसॉफ्ट का यू प्ले अगर भी एक्टिव है यू कैन एक्चुअली टाइप दी स्कोर्स एंड इफ यू आर लकी इफ यू आर फास्ट इनफ यू कैन एक्चुअली हैव द गेम विच एवर द कोड इज करस्पॉन्डिंग फॉर इन योर लाइब्रेरी एब्सोल्युटली फॉर फ्री 
you'll you'll own the game so basically get on get on your play man kholo you play all right go do it save your replay and then you can use it to make your own videos so this tool is a tool is as well as the tools that we using to make trailers so basically abhi jo jo stream pe hai what's happening right now is these guys are creating a track on track mania jahan pe abhi live uh कुछ ट्रैक मीनिया कम्युनिटी के जो टॉप लोग हैं फिलहाल लाइक इट्स अ वेरी न्यू गेम जो अभी बेस्ट निकल के आए देर गुन कम्पीट इन दिस ट्रैक राइट सो बेसिकली अ गाय इज क्रिएटिंग अ ट्रैक लाइफ फॉर अस एंड उसी ट्रैक में देर गुन रेस विद अस राइट इतना और है Excellent. Yeah. I'll just say you put a lot of people's hearts uh to uh at ease just then. Uh we'll be taking a look at that track in action in just a few moments here, but Augustine before I let you go, uh we I wanted to touch base on just kind of uh again that community aspect of, you know, how do people find these creations? What's a great way like there there's the club system that sort of allows people to connect to different different clubs of friends or maybe this club focuses on certain types of races and etc etc. Just give us an idea. Or guys also I would really like to mention that the ultra low latency mode is off apparently I tried to turn it on but kuch error hua and it didn't got turned on so don't worry I'll take all of your comments it's going to take a little while but don't worry all right we're going to watch all the comments so don't worry create what we call a campaign which is the same tool we're using to create our own campaigns with 25 maps and you can create also events so people can gather around and Uh, use the same skin, for example. Uh, have a club tag and compete uh, within each other on leaderboards and uh, share everything they can. They can also share videos, for example. It's really Excellent. great. <laughs> well, it sounds like there's lots of tools for folks to get creative, to share those creations, to discover new stuff in addition to just racing and trying to beat the tires off of each other. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Augustine, thank you so much for joining us to talk a little bit more about Trackmania. Folks, remember Trackmania is available now. Download and play it for free on the Epic Games Store and on Uplay. Augustine, thank you for joining us and congrats. Yeah, thank you. It's it's been great. All right, folks. We've got some competitive play coming up here just shortly, but first, another schedule reminder of the order of events today. Our Trackmania showcase continues until about 11:30 Pacific time. Then it's the Ubisoft Forward pre-show. We'll be taking a look at AI teammates in Ghost Recon Breakpoint, getting updates for the crew too, hearing from Trials Rising about a special new track for fans who like long rides, and a bunch more. Then at noon Pacific time, it's the main event, Ubisoft Forward with Watch Dogs Legion, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and more from Ubisoft's upcoming lineup of games. Stick around immediately following the show for a deeper look at Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and for now, it's back to the track. Joining me now is Omar Ben Abdallah, live producer at Ubisoft Nadeo, to talk about all the ways that Trackmania can get a little more competitive. Omar, how's it going, man? Pretty good, and you? How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm excited Great. to see. Some all right. Of the... uh, why am I streaming here? Sir, if Watch Dogs is with you, then tell me. You you can claim Watch Dogs uh, when the main event start 40 minutes after. All right, you can claim Watch Dogs. Just you have to log into Uplay or Twitch wherever you have linked your drops with. If you haven't linked your drops, uh, you can check out my article which I have shared at our Discord, Sam. Right, basically it will guide you how to claim your stuff and how to claim all the rewards. And once you've claimed all the rewards, uh, basically you can start claiming when the Ubisoft Forward starts. Okay. So you just have to watch the stream for one minute, and that's it, and you'll get Watch Dogs too. You'll get also other stuff, which, however, is not really necessary, but you can still get them if you're planning to get the future games like Watch Dogs Legion or Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Maksud Ubisoft service is unavailable. I know it crashed already. Now everybody is trying to log in, but it's okay. Karte rahe usse refresh. It's ho. It's ho jayega. Okay. और बेसिकली ड्रॉप क्लेम करने के लिए कुछ करना है नहीं यूबीसॉफ्ट डॉट कॉम पर जाओ और उधर क्लेम कर लो यूबीसॉफ्ट डॉट कॉम नहीं हो रहा गो टू ट्विच दे आर सम स्ट्रीमर्स इन फैक्ट आई जस्ट गिव यू द लिंक वेयर आई हैव जॉटेड डाउन एवरी डिटेल राइट जस्ट वेट अ सेकेंड आई गिव यू द लिंक सो बेसिकली यू जस्ट हैव टू फॉलो द लिंक एंड यू हैव टू डू नथिंग एल्स आई हैव जॉटेड डाउन एवरी थिंग यू कैन डू सो देर टू वेज अगर यूबीसॉफ्ट का पेज काम करे हेड ओवर टू यूबीसॉफ्ट दैट्स ऑल्सो फाइन अगर तुम्हें यूबीसॉफ्ट का पेज काम नहीं कर रहा जो मेरे को लग रहा है आई गेस तो हेड ओवर टू ट्विच एंड जैसे ही तुमने वो लिंक किया था क्या नाम है ट्रैक मेना के लिए वैसे ही तुम इसको भी लिंक कर सकते हो राइट 
अभी मैंने डिस्क्रिप्शन पे एक लिंक शेयर किया है उसको फॉलो कर लो मेरे लिए ले लोगे प्लीज़ आई रियली कान टेक साम मेरा खुद का यू प्ले अभी नशे कर रहा है एंड आई कान रियली डू दैट एंड प्लस आई हैव टू डू हैरीज ऑल्सो हैरीज अ स्लीप राइट सो प्लस आई ऑल्सो हैव टू टेक नोट्स वाई स्ट्रीमिंग बिकॉज यू आर आस्किंग वाई आई एम स्ट्रीमिंग हेयर आई आई हैव स्टार्टेड वर्किंग विद गेम फीन इन दर टीम एज अ इंटर्न आई एम लर्निंग हाउ टू डू स्टफ विद दैम सो दे आर टीचिंग मी सो दे आर लाइक वी डू स्टफ एट फेसबुक तेरे को यूट्यूब एक्सपीरियंस है यू कैन स्टार्ट हैंडलिंग यूट्यूब हैंडल सो आई सेट आई रियली यूर व्यू बी सॉफ्ट आई कैन कैन आई लाइक स्ट्रीम द फॉरवर्ड इवेंट दे विल लाइक गो हेड जो करने कर सो आई एम डूइंग दैट राइट नाउ कुल सो आई एम राइटिंग आर्टिकल्स फॉर दैम राइट नो द आर्टिकल विच आई शेड राइट नो वॉज ऑल्सो रिटन बाई मी डोज पेटी सब स्टैंडर्ड आई नो फॉर मोर डोप आर्टिकल्स एंड रिव्यूज यू कैन लुक एट अदर पीपल आर्टिकल्स इन द टीम द गाइज अ प्रिटी कूल नॉट कूल दे आर लाइक गॉड ओके दे आर इंग्लिश इज रियली गुड दे आर अप्रोच टू अर्स द गेम इज लाइक रियली नाइस सो या सो बेसिकली दिस इज अबाउट इट एंड यू कैन यू कैन यू कैन एंजॉय राइट तो यू कैन रेगुलरली चेक फॉर न्यूज यू कैन रेगुलरली चेक फॉर अपडेट इट्स अ रियली अमेजिंग साइट एंड एंजॉय टू दिस स्ट्रीम एवरी थिंग यू आर जो गन सी हेयर एवरी थिंग न्यू विल ऑल्सो बी एडेड टू दी गेम फाइन की वेबसाइट हैज वेल और राइट सो इफ यू मिस समथिंग डोंट वरी विल बैक यू अप एंड कवर एवरी थिंग अप और राइट सो बेसिकली इफ यू मिस आउट समथिंग इन द स्ट्रीम यू कैन कम बैक टू गेम फीन डॉट कॉम एंड चेक आउट एवरी थिंग यू नीड टू नो सो दे वोट मी एनी प्रॉब्लम राइट सो आई शट अप नॉट टेल समन आस एनी थिंग राइट Just give me a reminder to start watching the stream. I'll I'll ping you at Discord when the main event start, so that you can claim and come back and enjoy with me. All right. I only got to watch main stream account is already linked. All right. That's beautiful, man. All right. Dope. Easy. And and see uh, how which country is the best basically each week on the game, uh, and then the Open Grand League, uh, which is a great way to feel the pressure uh, of the professional players because you'll play, be playing on the same maps and the same format as the Grand League. So you'll be basically leaving the, the experience of a professional player by playing the Grand League, and maybe if you get good, maybe at some point you'll you'll be joining the Grand League and, and play against the 16 best players in the world. Oh my goodness! Well, we see Grand League plastered all over this track here. Uh, yeah. That's is that would that's the sort of highest level of Trackmania esport. It is basically what we have on on, on the Grand League is uh, the 16 best players in the world. You cannot have anyone better than them, and and we just put them on a special format that we design. Well, everything is possible uh, until the end and the last second of the last track. Uh so it's really great to see and and we are excited for for the next season which will start on on September. Nice. So in September more Grand League action coming your way. Uh but you know, there's a lot of sp- competitive space in between the tippy tip top uh for you to get involved. And is that something that, you know, in terms of like I just booted up Trackmania, I've raced a little bit. Is mm-hmm. that going to be easy for players to find? What's the way to get into that? Yeah, you'll have in inga- an in-game menu which uh, is called events and basically you'll be able to check out the events you'll have you want to play maybe uh during the week and and uh it will be also easy for the people to create events through the clubs. Uh well you'll basically be able to create an event in less than 2 minutes and and decide which map you want to have, which kind of format. Uh so we made everything easier for uh, everyone on Trackmania. Nice. So that I mean that can even be just you creating the events to just play with your friends or yeah, your also yeah. classmates or whatever else yeah <laughs> nice uh and so that's so these clubs this is kind of a way like clubs are also a way that people can get into you know finding people who you know like to race at the same time again or you know our friends or are connected through different ways uh and the clubs can be kind of of any size right yeah you can be have a club which is completely private and where you you play only with your friends or your room, your mates classmates um or you can just have a public uh, club which uh, is available and joinable by everyone and and just have fun with uh, a lot of people uh, doing a lot of events and and organizing a lot of content and maybe just a club that focuses on huge jumps like the one we just yeah. saw there <laughs> like we see, yeah o- only jumps maps and and <laughs> The, the the yeah that that will be quite great i would say quite <laughs> fun also this is a pretty close match uh yeah, the, actually, the top leader only has a match. few points ahead uh so I, i like it thanks for recruiting these folks into into the action here to to give us a look at some real some real speedy real tight turns yeah you can see how good they are by by their drifts and and 
how well they know the maps, obviously, since they've been playing the, the all star for, I think, uh, a bit more than two, two or three months now. So uh, they're getting used to the game and yeah, um, they're playing really good. Alright okay, guys, uh, I'll take the comments now. Uh, why you don't stream anymore makes me sad. It's okay, I'll stream. Okay, I have plans to stream, don't worry. Basically, I'm just uh, really tired these days and I'm thinking to do more stuff, alright? I'm making a new video on Minecraft. It was my birthday, I really wanted to take a break and rethink how I can make my streams better, right? Also, I started working with Game of Fiend, so I was already doing something and, you know, learning and how to be better. So, I'll manage both, it's okay. Uh, more stuff are being planned in the future ahead, okay? Don't worry. And also, big shout out, 418 subs over there. That's that's great. That was a great birthday gift also. So don't worry, we'll get back to streaming soon. And the guys who are seeing me for the first time, my name is Assassin UD. And I stream by the name of Toxic UD over YouTube and Facebook. If you want to check out that channel, you can as well. Thank you so much. Right? I can't read in the code. I is not fast enough. I need to get into typing master. I, you really need to, man. Even I do. All right? If you if you think you are now typing faster, please redeem some quotes for me too. I I've been trying since like last 15 quotes, and I I wrote one in like four seconds. I was counting in my brain, and it got already taken. So I I think it's fake, or it's not, or there are some guys who are really good with the keyboard with a single button they can type everything, uh, uh pretty fast. Where's Q and A? I didn't find really good questions at Q and A. I uh, you can even you can see what types of questions are there if there are good questions and if there are good amount of questions I'll do the Q&A whenever I feel like all right, so don't worry about it Also guys 30 minutes more and we're going to be jumping live into the Ubisoft forward event So stay tuned and if you have any questions Ubisoft fan right here You can go ahead and ask also. It's the first time Game of Fiend is streaming and Game of Fiend will be streaming regularly from now on so make sure to share the stream with your friends. All right, head over head over to gamerfiend.com and just drop the link. I'll drop the link again as well. Head over to gamerfiend.com and check out what all we are uh, have been up to. All right. Also, if you have good friends who think gaming is fun, or if you have some friends who want who you want to watch this event with, you can bring them here and we can have a really good conversation. All right. So enjoy your time over here. have a name uh, but I don't like to use it I just let people call it as they want uh, I'm calling it a different way in French obviously oh um, sure sure of course yeah basically everyone can can name the the, 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 the world as they want uh, and and there's many ways to to, to say to, like select the, the, the road we are seeing right now the language of racing uh, yeah it, it takes many forms <laughs> yeah <laughs> All right, so we're watching the competition play out here. Uh, once people, you know, Trek Mania is out now, free to download and play, uh, what would you recommend in terms of like, okay, I just want to get into the into the competition against other folks. I want to challenge myself right out of the gate. What's the best way to get that started? To be quite honest, the best thing will be to play the Daily Cup because you'll be facing uh, players from all around the world on, on a track that is known only uh, each day. So the track of the day uh, map. Um, so you'll be able to see how good you are against other people and, and you can do that every day so you can maybe see your progression on the whole week and maybe at the end of the week you'll, you'll be able to beat people that you wouldn't even think to ab about on, on, on the early state of the week. Oh, I like that. I like that the, that kind yeah. of like, because so, you know, a lot about kind of uh, competition is that progression and you know, the sense of moving. I want to do a personal q and <laughs> If you if you really want to do a personal Q&A, you can go ahead right now. I I'm ready to answer all your questions. I have no problem. All right. But if it's like personal, personal, then I'll come at Discord tomorrow evening, man. Uh, so then we can chill around. All right. Cool. He's like slot like not quite slow, but he's in there. Oh. Yeah. Yep. Coming up around this big, it's like S turn. He's still first. I believe in him. <laughs> he can feel, he can feel the, the positive vibes coming from you. You, you can this see the slow motion plug there. Just played fun also to watch. And he's finishing first. Great. There he goes. I looks got it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> looks like Omar backed the right racer. Uh, Shorty coming in with a victory. And Omar, thank you so much 
uh, for talking about competitive track mania. Uh, anything else you want to mention before we wrap it up? Well, obviously, thank you for having me and, and thanks to the players for playing uh, this competition. Thanks to all the closed alpha players we had uh, because they help us truly to make this game better. And, and we're pretty happy with, what, with the track mania we have right now. So yeah, just play track mania, it's free. And, and have fun on it, I'm pretty sure you'll have. And yeah, that's it. All right, Omar, thank you so much. Track Mania, folks, it's out now on Epic Game Store and you play. Go ahead and download it. Get in there and get racing. Now, our time with Track Mania is coming to a close and it's on to the next show. Ubisoft Forward pre-show is starting momentarily. We're going to take a look at Ghost Recon, Breakpoint, The Crew 2, Trials Rising, new stuff coming from all these games. You're not going to want to miss it. And then when the countdown timer hits zero, it's Ubisoft Forward, the big showcase of the latest and greatest upcoming games from Ubisoft, followed by an in-depth look at Assassin's Creed Valhalla. We got a lot more in store for you, so let's go ahead and throw it over to Kat. Thank you, Chris, and hello, everyone, and welcome to the Ubisoft Forward pre-show. The main event will be starting in just 30 minutes and will feature news from our unreleased games, including Watch Dogs Legion, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Hyperscape, and more. Now to warm up, we have 30 minutes of this from the games you're already playing, like Ghost Recon Breakpoint, Trials Rising, and The Crew 2, as well as some exclusive behind the scenes so you can get to know us a little better. So let's kick off this pre-show with an update from Just Dance 2020. If you're a Just Dance fan and want to win some cool swag, head over to the Just Dance website for all the details. For our next segment, we have something a little different than what we usually do. A few years ago, Ubisoft created the Ubisoft Entrepreneurs Lab and the Open Innovation Accelerator. This allowed us to create partnerships and synergies with indie studios from across the industry. And since so many industry events were canceled this year, uh, we wanted to showcase several indie projects and teams that Ubisoft has been collaborating with over the past few years. Our first indie showcase is developer Machine and Mensch, who is working on the Curious Expedition 2. Let's hear more from the team behind the game. Hi, my name is Masha, it's Masha and I'm a game designer at Machine Mensch. Machine Mensch is a small and diverse indie game. 26 minutes per week, because after 26 minutes, the main event starts now, it's pre-show. So we're going to be a pre-show. So we're going to be a with independent developers to talk about and share expertise and knowledge. We work together in mutual respect, which we much appreciated. We're working on the Cures Expedition 2, which is the sequel to our Expedition Simulation game. This time, the game is set in Paris in 1899, during the World Expo when the Eiffel Tower was built. But more importantly, you will be traveling to these mysterious islands, you will be interacting with unknown tribes, fight dangerous beasts, find many secrets. Thanks to our procedure technology, every time you play, it's a new world, new characters, and a new storyline that you shape with each of your interactions until it becomes really your own unique adventure. And we will have more indie guests coming up later in the pre-show, so stick around. Now, a while ago, Ubisoft released its very first live-action TV show on Apple TV+. And it's a comedy about making video games called Mythic Quest Raven's Banquet. And to keep the show authentic, Ubisoft's Red Storm Studio went above and beyond by creating a playable sandbox for the game that is actually featured in the show. So now let's head behind the scenes for an exclusive look. This is the home of Clancy. Okay, it's very Clancy. It's very Clancy-esque. Yes. <laughs> I get it. All right, now I'm starting to understand. Right. I too keep all my awards at the 
front of my office. It's entirely empty. So Mythic Quest is uh, Ubisoft's first live action comedy. The whole show is about a team that is developing a super successful MMORPG. And it's about, you know, all the, all the people within the game development team and their relationships and what they go through in creating one of the world's most successful games. All right. Incredible. Thank you. But are we sure that we're finished? When we heard about what was going on, we weren't really sure if we were a great fit because we always made shooters realistic. And we listened to the pitch and we were super excited about the idea. So we thought, all right, what's, what does Ubisoft have that we could channel to fit this? You're, you're fucking me. Yes. You're fucking me. But I'm not enjoying I knew it. it. It's I for knew. the game. When we started on the project, I think we imagined we would just make video clips that would run on screens in the background or something. So it would feel like a real game studio. But once we saw the script, once we started collaborating with the team, we realized, oh, they want a game, like an actual game. Of course, making an actual game would take years. So we started selecting the pieces that they really needed for certain scenes. And from there, it was not long before we said, you know, what if we make this actually playable? What if we make it so you can connect a controller and control the characters? And so that's what we ended up doing. The thing that I love most is the shuffle. Exploding people's heads with this thing is straight fire. Crunch, man. We had requests to do things like make a contagious viral disease in which people bleed out of their eyeballs first, uh, then they bleed out of their anus, then they vomit and bleed out of their anus at the same time. We set it up in such a way that you could trigger it in stages because we didn't know what the timing was going to be. The idea here is we can hit it and it can control the timing of, of when things are happening. So the next time you hit it, he starts puking out blood. And at this point, we would probably have the camera start panning back like this. And then you can hit the button again and you can see the blood ocean itself has started coming in. And so now they're all bleeding out of the back end as well. And then the final is just everybody exploding in bloody gore. And then this was Keith's idea. <laughs> he wanted the skulls coming up and bobbing up and down in the water, so. Uh -huh. David, can we actually make this quick? I've got a lot of work to do. The game right before a global pandemic was not a great look. Today was the first time we showed Mythic Quest Raven's Banquet to an audience. I've never seen it with more than six or seven people in a room. And so I wanted to make sure that we gave them an opportunity to hopefully recognize that this is a giant love letter to them, to the industry itself. I was a little nervous, I gotta be honest. I thought it was gonna be a little cringy, but it was fantastic. I thought there was a lot of truth and in the humor. It's about time that we had a show about our industry. You could tell when the audience was laughing, when they really hit something that, that felt like the game industry. I think it's brilliant. All right, so if you have not yet seen it, uh, the first season of Mythic Quest Raven's Banquet is available right now on Apple TV+, and a full version of this making of will be coming out over the next few days. All right, now it is time to fasten your seatbelts and start your engines as we head out to Lyon, France, to visit our team at Ubisoft Ivory Tower to get an update on the crew, too. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Crew 2 at Ubisoft Forward. My name is James Reese. I'm a community developer here at Ivory Tower, and I'll be your host for this quick glimpse into all the exciting things we have going on over the next few weeks. It's been two years of exciting things we have going on over the next few weeks. It's been two years already since launch, with six major updates and hundreds of vehicles under our belt. And our in Hollywood only went live a few days ago. Let's have a look. for you to get your hands on what's coming. 
There have been a few speed bumps along the way, but over the past two years, you, the community, have made the Crew 2 a motorsports playground where all players are welcome and where anything is possible. So thank you to the Crew Social, Exchange, Discord, Reddit, and all of our players. We've got a little something for you in-game to show our appreciation. It's the 67 Volkswagen Beetle. So let's see what kind of Hollywood twist you can put on it. That's it from me. There'll be more news dropping over summer, so keep your eyes peeled, starting with this. In case you missed it, make sure to boot up the game right now to unlock the amazing 69 Volkswagen Beetle that was just shown in the video, and stay tuned in the near future for more info about year 3 of the Crew 2. Our next video is from our second indie guest, Bossa Studios, who will be injecting a delirious dose of fun with Surgeon Simulator 2. Enjoy! Hi, I'm Nick from Bossa Studios, and I'm a senior game designer on the upcoming Surgeon Simulator 2. So at Bossa, we're always keen to share game development knowledge, and Ubisoft has been a fantastic partner in this. They deliver lectures on procedural content development and player science. And in turn, we shared with them the ideation processes that we use to develop initial ideas into living, breathing games. Which brings me on to Surgeon Simulator 2. We've really doubled down on the physics-based pandemonium that the series is notorious for and we've pretty much expanded on every other aspect of the game as well. So this time around, you're no longer just a floating hand confined to the operating table. You're actually a full first-person surgeon with an entire medical facility to explore. And in addition to the levels that you'll find in story mode, you'll now be able to create your own unique levels and experiences using Bossa Lab's creation mode. So it's a really easy to use, intuitive set of tools that allows players to create either on their own or in online multiplayer with up to three friends. Everything players create can then be uploaded and shared with the community. And here, surgery really is just the tip of the iceberg. During our closed alpha period, we've seen players create all sorts of amazing stuff, from bowling alleys to space stations, pirate ships to horror-themed escape rooms. And this is before the game is even released. So we absolutely cannot wait to see what players create when we launch the game this coming August. And in fact, if you pre-order Surgeon Simulator 2, you can receive exclusive closed beta access. So for those of you who are just joining us, you are watching the pre-show and Ubisoft Forward will start once the countdown on your screen reaches zero. And make sure you log into Uplay to unlock rewards as you watch the main event. But now, our next segment is about an Easter egg in The Division 2, so let's go behind the scenes with the devs from Ubisoft Massive Studio in Malmo, Sweden to find out more. Running through collapsed buildings, climbing over fallen debris, and encountering makeshift living spaces is common for players of The Division 2. Within its post-pandemic environment, many players have spotted something a bit more unusual, which has left them asking, What's up with all of these rubber ducks? So there's a thing in, in programming especially where you, you talk to a rubber duck and it's a way to solve your problems. If you talk to a rubber duck and you just say things out loud, it helps. One of our artists decided to take this to another level and he used the rubber duck scaled up to like a ginormous scale and put it in the level just to remind him to do something. And it sat there for a while and the rest of us kind of really loved this giant rubber duck sitting there for so long. We decided to put a little memorials to it across the world. What started off as little memorials, and then we started adding stories to them. So there's one where these two ducks are sitting on a bench having a date together. And there's another one somewhere where he's sitting with an umbrella hiding from the rain. The idea of the ducks is similar to the rest of our storytelling, where we're trying to add some hope into the world. Because you're coming in as a division agent to try and save what you can and rebuild, but you need to know there's something there to save. So having bits of happiness lets you know like it's still worth saving for these little happy moments. 
One shrine in particular became a beloved fan favorite, showing up multiple times across YouTube and Reddit. So, uh, Karen, how was your day? Well, Luke, it's been productive. So the origin story of Productive, one of our level designers made an amazing pun one day and we decided to make a graffiti out of it and put it in the game and it became like a duck shrine and, and players started finding it and wondering where it came from. We've been finding these rubber duckies all over the map. It says here on the wall in graffiti, Productive, and there's a large rubber ducky, bigger than all the other ones we've found, and he's, uh, he's, he's got bottles of booze all around him. Not only that, but he has a couple soldier duckies guarding a parrot in a cage. But there's there's more just like this in the Division 2. What's really great about our community is they come together. They find a common thing that they want to develop or find or get unlocked, and they just put time and effort into it. We don't put them in easy to find places. So that means players are genuinely, hopefully enjoying just exploring the environment and finding all these little Easter eggs we've hidden around. And also not the Easter eggs, just the main part of the game and all the storytelling we put into it. I haven't found all of them. I don't know exactly how many there are, but they haven't found all of the ducks yet. Encouraged by the community's response to the ducks, developers recently hid another secret in the game and made it the focal point of an all new community challenge we actually put Tommy the Teddy Bear into the game. So Tommy the Teddy Bear is a trauma teddy mentioned in a lot of lore, but the bear itself actually was not in the game. With episode three, we put a bunch of them into the world, actually opened up Easter egg hunt for him specifically. It's a nice little exciting moment when you kind of open Reddit and you see someone's found the thing that you kind of just snuck in under the radar and no one really knows about it and it, some of the players are really clever. There's, there's some uh, hard Easter eggs that some of the level designers and gameplay designers have put in, and people have managed to solve it with no help whatsoever. Gamers are smart. <laughs> so now that you know, be on the lookout for both ducks and teddy bears next time you boot up The Division 2. We now have our final indie guests, Thunder Lotus Games, who were the 2017 winner of the indie series that took place in Montreal. So let's find out more about the beautiful coziness of Spirit Fair in this next video. Hey everybody, I'm Rodrigue Marketeer at Thunder Lotus. We're a Nindy studio based out of Montreal, Canada, and makers of the games Jotun, Sundered, and our new game Spirit Fair, which is due out later this year. For the past six years, we've tried to make uh, AAA quality games with a hand-drawn indie heart. Hitting a quality standard consistently in game dev is a huge challenge. There's so much trial and error on the path. And during the Sundered production, we were lucky enough to have the Ubisoft Entrepreneurs Program in our corner to help us reach our goals. As uh, co-winners of the Ubisoft Indie Series in 2017, we received not only generous funding, but also uh, crucial mentorship and access to the Ubisoft testing facilities. So we're grateful to Ubisoft for their support and help us make what would become our biggest success to date. We've taken that experience with us onto what is our most ambitious production yet, and that's Spiritfarer, uh, which we're calling a cozy management game about dying. In Spiritfarer, you play Stella, the newly appointed fairy master to the deceased. And as Stella, you're going to build a boat, you're going to explore the world in search of spirit passengers uh, seeking passage to the afterlife. You're going to spend relaxing quality time with them, you're going to create lasting memories, but ultimately you're going to have to learn how to say goodbye to your cherished friends. It's a game that's near and dear to our hearts and it's something really special. We, we can't wait to share it with the world later this year. So look for it soon on uh, PC, on Xbox One, PS4, Nintendo Switch, and Xbox Game Pass. Thanks a lot and cheers. It is time for an update on our favorite motorcycle platformer with the insanity, pain, and triumph we all know and we all love. Trials Rising came out last year, but I think the team from our Red Link studio in Helsinki has a little surprise coming to the game for the fans of the franchise. So let's take a look. Swear you be the death of me! Hi, we're here today to introduce you to an exciting new endurance challenge coming to Trials Rising. But to make sure that we respect social distancing guidelines, Auntie and I decided John! to- John! Do I fire the goose now? What? Fire the goose? Fire the goose! Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Giga Track.
Far from a remake of the classic track from Trials Evolution, this is an all new journey across the world of Trials Rising in by far the longest track that we've ever put in a trial. Come on! Did you tell him he's the longest track ever? Yeah, I'm telling him that. By far the longest track we've ever put in a trials game. The Giga Track will take you across many different environments from the iconic. Yeah, I was just maybe you want to tell them. Oh, yeah, I can't log. Hard starts and it ends and it's so long. And what are you doing? We're trying to get a hood. I'm going to tell you so forward that even if you trigger it, it's going to be a good thing. I'm going to tell you that you're going to get a problem. Giga Track releases this Thursday, July 16th for the low, low price of. Did you tell them it's me? You heard that right, riders. Gigatrack will be available for free to all Trials Rising players when it releases this Thursday. You heard that right. The Gigatrack is coming to the game and it will be the longest, most insane track in Trials history and it will be free for all Trials Rising players. Now for our last game update, the Ghost Recon Breakpoint team is ready to share some details on their upcoming updates. AI teammates are coming to the game. Let's have a look at the trailer. The time has come. AI teammates are back in Ghost Recon Breakpoint. And for all solo players, they're gonna be a game changer. Available at any point after you have reached Erewhon for the first time, Fury, Fixit, and Vasily can be activated or dismissed at will. And from the beginning, you will be able to fully customize them. This customization includes all of the physical attributes, as well as gear, equipment, or even full costumes. Your teammates can be tweaked just as much as your main character. Just like Nomad, your teammates will adapt and react to the world of Aroa and its environments and they will always follow your own behavior. If you decide to go stealth, they will equip silencers and crouch, or go prone when possible. But if you decide to go loud and open fire, they will stick by your side. When deployed, you can issue different orders to your teammates through the order wheel. There are four different orders you can give to your teammates. You can tell them to regroup on your location, to hold their current position, to go to a specific location, and to open fire on nearby enemies. These orders can be given at any time, even through your binoculars and drone. Once they approach potential threats, the teammates will notify you and mark them automatically. Got a hostile. With a good look at your enemies, you will be able to set up a sync shot where each of your teammates picks a target. You can even link it to your three sync shot drones for a simultaneous seven target takedown. The teammates have weapons equipped at all times, a versatile assault rifle to accommodate all situations, and a primary weapon that you will be able to fine-tune. Indeed, apart from mark upgrades and passive bonuses, the full gunsmith is accessible to your teammates, and their weapon of choice will have a direct effect on the battleground. Depending on the type of weapon they have equipped, the teammates will adapt their engagement distance and rate of fire. From close distance shotgun wielding, all the way to long-distance sniper shots. Of course, if you get taken down, your teammates' priority will be to try and rescue you. To achieve that, they will first focus their fire on the surrounding enemies before getting to you. And they will expect the same from you, especially as you will be able to carry them to safety if the situation requires it. Finally, the teammates will also be your best allies in any vehicle, especially on the road and during high-stake pursuits. The teammates will be available for all solo Ghost Recon Breakpoint players on July 15th. And we cannot wait to see your reactions. We'll see you on the battlefield, Ghosts. Hey, Ghosts. I'm Grace from the Ghost Recon team. As you've just seen, the AI teammates are finally landing in Ghost Recon Breakpoint with our next major update on July 15th. Alongside the AI teammates, this update comes with a ton of new content, including a gunsmith upgrade, new PvP content, quality of life updates, and more. You will be able to try it all during our next free weekend from July 16th to July 20th. But that's not all. We've got one last thing to show you. Enjoy, and we'll see you on Aroa, Ghosts.
To anyone listening, this is Haruhi Ito, speaking for the outcasts. We stand against Sentinel's illegal occupation of Aroa. We call on all of Aroa to join us. Separated, Sentinel wins. But united, we cannot be defeated. And now our very final video for this pre-show is another episode of our WOW Moments comparing the craziest and coolest clips from you, our players. Interrogate him. Oh, you can interrogate this guy though. Oh, okay. So there's a line that people want me to yell. Uh, but I can't usually do it because I'll freak out my neighbors. But as you can see, I'm at the crash in Ocean Beach and there's no one too close, so. Reloading! Fuck, someone told me, I gotta go. <laughs> Nice clip, no one betrayed anyone, Sam. Don't worry. Gameplay, okay, it's okay, don't worry. Basically, uh, servers are facing a lot of issues right now. Uh, I'm going to check the stats. Not only the Uplay servers, game servers are crashing. Because it's a lot of heavy load. So, it's a lot of heavy load. So, it's a lot of heavy load. You know, server attacks and stuff. So, stay tuned, it's okay. Anyway, we're about to go live in the live event of Ubisoft Forward. So let's do this guys, it's on. This, this is Ubisoft to the no, This is Ubisoft to the world. Explore our worlds. Meet the devs. See the games. Join us. Hi everyone, I'm Neelam Kumar and I'm very excited to be co-hosting the first Ubisoft Forward with the talented Yusuf Magid. Today's show is all about getting up close and in-depth with all the exciting games we have in production here at Ubisoft. I'm Yusuf, but there's no time to waste. So let's head straight for the streets of futuristic London. 
and see what the hackers of DeadSec are getting into. The illegal paintings spreading some star messaging over the last few weeks across London are not the work of several people, as was originally believed, but the work of an individual. The criminal suspected to have links with the terrorist group of Authorities recommend not to approach the individual. First, they came for the foreigners, and I did not speak out because I was not a foreigner. Then they came for the protesters. And I did not speak out because I was not a protester. Then they came for the journalists. And I did not speak out because I was not a journalist. And then they came for street artists. And I did not speak out. Because I am not a street artist. to speak for me. Welcome to the resistance. There's a welcome gift for our new members. But the disappearance of the criminal Layers. You could have told me it was a bloody costume party. Try it on. The new key suspect has been David Ford, a 43-year-old London taxi driver. He has no criminal record, but is currently believed to be a terrorist. People have been asked not to approach him. The authorities advise all residents... I'm Clint Hawking. I'm Clint Hawking. Clint has been a longtime creative force here at Ubisoft, and now he's bringing this vision to Watch Dogs Legion. Um, so yeah, what we just saw was an amazing short film by the director Alberto Mielgo that uh, was inspired by Watch Dogs Legion and looks at, at the game and the universe and the characters through his incredible uh, artistic vision and visual style. The city needs a resistance. Like the film, Watch Dogs Legion tells the story of ordinary heroes setting aside their differences in order to come together as a collective and to fight for a positive change. You can literally recruit and play anyone who you see in the open world. You profile people that are interesting to you, you help them with their problem, you play their origin mission. Just help me get some closure and I'll do whatever you want. Sounds like a dead sec problem. 
leave it to us. And that's how you recruit them into your team. And then they become the heroes of the game and, and the stars of your story. And what are you doing in my flat? You with Albion? Please, think more underground. You with Albion? I'm tickled, but think more underground. What, dead sick? Yeah, right, and I'm Che Guevara. You're done. And they make the story not only, you know, unique to them, but unique to you as the player and, and personal to you because they're, you know, heroes that you've chosen and invested in. What would I say to fans? I guess I'd say, you know, uh, take care of yourselves, stay safe. Welcome to the Resistance. Ah, London town. A modern metropolis. Built on history and prosperity. Only took 12,000 years to build it up and one night to tear it all down. Oh my God. Listen up. Get all your units to move in and lock down the city. With London under attack by a mysterious terrorist, the government turns to a private military company called Albion to keep everyone safe. What could possibly go wrong? Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Nigel Cass, CEO of Albion. He's kindly stepped up to establish order. Understand this. I will not allow anyone, not even myself, to jeopardize this. He will stop at nothing to permanently control the city. London will be the first city in the world to be made truly safe. Nigel's not the only opportunist who's taken a liking to this fair city. Meet Mary Kelly, head of the most powerful crime syndicate in London. Be sure and spread the word. She and her goons are using the dark web to sell everything from party pills to people. This microchip is scary, I know, but I've got to keep tracks on my merchandise. You do not want to ruffle her feathers. With the city out on its ass, it now falls on you to build a resistance and take back London. All right, everyone. Faces on, guns out. Any of the brave Londoners you see walking the streets can be recruited into your team. Like him. Or even I got some leaks that everyone can become your next secret weapon. In our we need to get some dirt on Nigel Cass, and that means breaking into Albion headquarters inside the Tower of London. All the hardy souls you see here are people we have recruited from the streets of London. They all have unique abilities, and you're free to tackle this mission with whoever you like. Dear God, my eyes. Badly. Zip up, get to work, and let's never talk about this again. Like everyone in DedSec, Arthur can hack pretty much whatever. But as a construction worker, he has a particular set of tools that make him handy. He can even call his own cargo drone. crashing when you're not invited and who needs a regular old gun when you have a bloody nail gun Jesus Christ what is that thing perhaps we could approach this mission differently if you'd rather keep your distance we've got you covered Amy is a drone expert what have we here? A real tech connoisseur. Hate spiders, but love this one. What an adorable creepy crawler. Here we are. Let's class the place up. A drone expert does have the unique ability to summon their own drone. This little darling is fast and stealthy. She aims, she fires, she hits. I'm reading incoming drones. She can also hack enemy drones, turning the tide in her favor. And if you are not into direct confrontation, there are more ways than one to get the job done. 
Recruiting an Albion officer like Brielle here might be challenging, but it'll get you inside restricted Albion areas. Don't mind me, just doing recon for a bunch of insurgents. However, do anything suspicious and she'll probably wind up with a bullet in the back of her head. You've been approved for entry. We're missing the human element here. I can get the defense minister on the line right now. Well, if you feel you must. Criminals running our streets, illegals threatening our families, the police commissioner himself, assassinated by terrorists. Well, that seems to be enough evidence. Next up, we're crashing Mary Kelly's organ farming operation and putting a stop to it. That's good. The buyers expect high quality stuff. And we need a hard nut for this. Impairing our frontal lobe again, are we? Bags. Don't disturb me in my natural habitat. Say hello to Mickey. The man lives for his team. I put another air on my chest. And doesn't mind getting his hands dirty. <laughs> he does have a slight drinking problem, though. He's passed out. Ah, oh, well, we'll come back to him. You know what? Let's go with someone a bit more professional. <laughs> it's almost crass to call him a hitman. I'd even call him an artist. Here's the bastard responsible. Ah, <sighs> done and dusted. Not bad, not bad if I do say so, innit? Not everyone in London is a legendary assassin or a super spy, but everyone can be a hero. War, war, war. This ain't a game, this ain't a game, this ain't a game. So get out there, find the best recruits, and build your resistance. It's time to take back London. Plunging the player into a living, breathing city, teeming with unique locales and characters, has always been a central pillar of the Watch Dogs series. So what goes into building those worlds? Here's Amanda Mutt to tell us more. My name's Amanda Mutt. I'm a level artist on Watch Dogs Legion at Ubisoft Toronto. Being a level artist, I think, is the coolest job in video games because we do get the freedom to, to kind of like pick and choose what little details we want to depict. And we get ample opportunities to tell the stories that we want to tell in the spaces that we're assigned to. I have the capacity to hide things and, you know, like small little Easter eggs. In AC Unity, there was a boat somewhere in the world that was covered in cats. And then it happened again in Watch Dogs 2 and there may or may not be something in London that is a boat filled with cats in some capacity. So. <laughs> I was fortunate enough to go to E3 last year. Some of the people that I was showing our demo to were from London, so no matter where I dropped them in the city, they would go, oh my god, this feels like Camden, this, you know, this feels like Southwark, this feels like Westminster. When people are talking about some detail that I've put into the world and they're excited about it, like that feels so good as somebody who, you know, builds these worlds with care. I love it. <laughs> and now some news for Brawlhalla fans. 
In just a few weeks, you'll be able to battle it out with your favorite legends on iOS and Android devices. Three, two, one, brawl! And now, whether you need a Tom Clancy action fix on the go, or want to dive back into one of the most beloved fantasy franchises in gaming, we've got you covered. Target is being held on the ground floor. Go, go, go! Mount chain is down. Request air support. Target northeast rooftop. Roger. Inbound. Danger close. I need an EMP deployed now. EMP imminent. Get back in your cell! Take this. Don't make me regret this. Speaking of Tom Clancy, it's been five years since Rainbow Six Siege first launched, and the community has never been stronger. In celebration of this milestone, Ubisoft Montreal has put together a special video to thank all of the amazing players and developers that have helped Siege become the game it is today. In December 2015, a small team released Rainbow Six Siege. A game built on a strong vision. Creativity, competitiveness, and team play. For the player, the 1st of December is a début, but for us too. We have to engage and say to the player, this game is installed, you can also install it, and we are here. That original vision was quickly adopted by our passionate community, propelling it to a whole new level. This is such a special moment, and being at 
one year anniversary of Rainbow Six. Now, game being uh, stronger than ever, uh, more players today than we had in the past, it means uh, the world to us. But we also had our share of challenges. Um, health that touches upon subject like matchmaking, connectivity, all those aspects are absolutely critical to the experience of the player. Through it all, we're always driven by you, our community, and together, we grow stronger. There is no sequel plan, and we are here for the next 10 years, so expect more Rainbow Six in your life for quite some time. les succès, c'est vraiment le résultat de autant de nous que de vous. Ce jeu, il est autant le vôtre qu'il est le nôtre, nous, l'équipe de développement. Now 60 million players strong, we're just getting started. From the devs that build the game to the community that plays it, thank you. If you haven't tried it yet, dive into our new Operation Steel Wave update available now and take Ace and Malusi out for a spin. A few days ago, we introduced y'all to a brand new multiplayer shooter. Now, it's time to venture into the hyperscape. in the hyperscape. That's not supposed to be there. Let me get you all up to speed, okay? About 30 years ago, everything that we feared about our future started to come true. We made some good decisions. We made some bad decisions. Actually, we made a lot of bad decisions. So, here we are. 10 billion souls living in the crush of the megacities. But the people at Prisma <laughs> changed everything. They gave everyone a way out. The Hyperscape. In the Hyperscape, the biggest draw by far is Crown Rush. This is where anyone can become someone. change your life but strange things have been happening lately rumors of people getting hurt users disappearing from the real world a darker secret lies at the heart of hyperscape and we have to find it some of us are searching for a way up some of us for a way out, and for others, a new way all together. That's what brings us to the edge of the future, to the hyperscape. I'm JC, creative director on Hyperscape. JC's work on Far Cry Primal and multiple Prince of Persia titles has established him as a top creative here at Ubisoft. For me, what's exciting is uh, we started uh, building it from scratch, uh, seeing it grow, uh, adding ideas is really cool. Hello, contender. Welcome to the hyperscape. The game takes place in 2054. It's in a future where humanity has grown a little darker. 
one of the, the companies there, they are launching what's called the Hyperscape, which is a virtual world and the internet of the future. It's the place where everything converges. Uh, within the virtual world, there is a battle royale that takes place in the virtual city of Neo Arcadia. Then we also introduce a lot of new things. You get the opportunity to do parkour on the rooftops, to go into interiors where it's much more narrow, much more stressful. Uh, you get to go to the landmarks where there's more uh, opportunities to get cool items, but also more players, so it's a risk-reward kind of deal. We introduce the notion of hacks, special abilities that you can pick up on the fly to adapt your tactics. With hacks, you can do things like uh, teleport yourself, uh, you can wrap yourself into a ball and uh, bounce around the battlefield. So a lot of abilities that let you have fun, that are toys that you can play with. And finally, it's made as a spectacle, so all the viewers will be able to interact with the game on different levels through the Twitch extension. So every few minutes, there's going to be a vote, and viewers will be able to decide what effect they want to affect the whole battle. So things like changing the gravity, uh, infinite ammo, or stuff like that. So players, while this happens, really have to adapt to all kinds of stuff that is happening. So for me, it's really exciting because right now, as we speak, we are launching the open beta, and so it's going to be available for uh, free to play for all PC players worldwide. And I really want to thank all the players, all the streamers, and all the viewers who participated in Tech Test and who will participate in the open beta. Here's a short glimpse of what you can expect. Watch and learn how it's done. Perfecto. Showtime. Mine. <laughs> Let's show them what I'm made of. Go time. The digital world of the hyperscape gave our artists and developers incredible freedom when it came to designing characters. Production manager Anna Maria Muska is going to take us behind the scenes of character design. My name is Anna Maria Muska. I'm the production manager for characters and weapons on Hyperscape. We have paid an exceptional amount of detail to our characters. We switch different outfits, different fashion statements, different tattoos, different materials until we see them as real individuals as real people. So the second you pick a character, you see them in game, you understand what their motivations are and what drives them and what challenges them. This was the first lineup of characters. This is our default base, but even starting from the hair down, everything has been meticulously thought of. Would this person actually like this type of outfit? Would this person enjoy the type of tattoos that we're putting on them? Will they actually like to be in this body? Each season, we plan to produce new outfits for these characters. So we're hoping some of our players are going to see the effort and maybe even correlate some of the accessories to what's going to happen in the game. We're very excited to see it in people's hands. As we move into the next generation of gaming, Ubisoft has been working closely with console makers to take advantage of all the extraordinary capabilities these new consoles will offer. Now we have a special guest to tell us a little more. Hey everyone, Phil Spencer from Xbox. With Watch Dogs Legion, Ubisoft is supporting smart delivery. So you will get the absolute best version of the game on any version of Xbox you're playing on. On Series X, you'll get to take advantage of the amazing work the team has done with DirectX Ray Tracing 
to create an absolutely immersive version of London like you've never seen before. Ubisoft has a unique ability to create immersive worlds, setting a new bar that continues to drive our industry forward. I'm a huge fan of Assassin's Creed. I love the time I've spent exploring the world in Assassin's Creed Odyssey. And I can't wait for you to see the gameplay from Assassin's Creed Valhalla that's coming up now. All right, we know you've been waiting to hear more about this game since it was announced back in April. And now it's time for a deep dive into the world of Vikings. My name is Julien Laferriere and I'm the producer of Assassin's Creed Valhalla. So a couple of weeks ago, we announced Assassin's Creed Valhalla and the reaction from the fans was just amazing. The time period of Vikings is really, really inspiring. When we did our research, we found that, you know, there were not mindless barbarians. Vikings were actually farmers trying to find new lands for them to settle. And so they had really human motivations. So for us to have this opportunity to tell kind of the real story about Vikings and kind of separate ourselves from the myths and the folklore is really something that drove us to, to make this game. The team went to Norway and England to take the same roads that the Vikings did to really experience what it meant to be a Viking at that time. And then leaving Norway, which is barren but majestic, and just coming by boat in England and see those rolling green hills full of sheep, full of life, is just this moment that most likely the Vikings felt as well. You need to see this land of opportunity. And this is exactly the feeling we want players to experience in this game. It is a personal adventure, you know? It is the story of Eivor, a Viking chieftain. Eivor is uh, either a male or a female. You decide when you start the game. They will have to leave Norway to settle in England because you just can't live in Norway anymore. There's too much political pressure, no resources available. Obviously in England, it's full of Anglo-Saxons and other people, and they don't really want you there. So you will have to fight your way there to kind of build your own settlement and see your clan prosper. Vikings were brutal warriors. Shields! And the fact that they were mastering a lot of weapons coming from the medieval times really inspired us to kind of revamp the fight system. To leverage the brutality and the intensity of Viking combat. Vikings were not only fighting face to face, they were masters of stealth and deception when needed. They used basically any sort of tactics they could use to win the battle. So we want to portray the full range of combat that you can imagine coming from the Vikings. We are very happy to finally be able to show you the game we've all been working on. So please enjoy this deep dive into Assassin's Creed Valhalla. In Assassin's Creed Valhalla, you will relive the epic saga of the Viking invasion of England. You play as Eivor, a Viking from Norway, who will lead his or her battle-hardened warriors across the North Sea to the British Isles. Eivor is driven by an ambitious goal, to build a thriving Norse settlement in a hostile land. For the good of our clan, it is time we go a Viking. Today we raid, that tomorrow we may build. England is a dark age tangle of broken kingdoms and warring dynasties, a land of opportunity and riches. As you prowl England's rivers by longship, you may raid locations you spot from the shoreline. Ground your ship and blow your horn to lead your raiding crew into battle.
crew will assist you on all your raids. Fighting enemies. Battering down doors. And stealing cargo too heavy for one set of arms. Whatever riches and resources you pillage may be used to develop your settlement, giving you access to useful services, better tools, and new settlers. At the heart of your settlement is the Alliance map. It will serve as a record of the allies you have made, and a guide for future opportunities. The Viking Age was a time of warriors and legends. In Valhalla, you will find the largest variety of enemies ever assembled in an Assassin's Creed game. Every archetype offers a unique challenge. Some will coordinate with their allies for special attacks, while others will use nearby objects to their advantage, including the bodies of fallen warriors. To face these attacks, you must find and exploit your opponent's weaknesses to gain the upper hand. Take the fight to your foes with a host of brutal new combat abilities. Snare them with a Viking harpoon. Pummel them with throwing axes. Incapacitate them with the new stun system to keep them at a distance. Or finish them off. Dual wield any two weapons you wish to unleash a deadly combination of attacks. Customize your fighting style as you see fit, and become a legendary Viking warrior. All combinations of weapons are available to dual wield, including two shields. Not all situations call for violence. In this new land, a Viking must find a way to adapt. As Eivor is not welcome in England, you may need to outsmart your enemies, avoiding unwanted attention in towns and bustling cities. Use Eivor's hood and cloak to blend with crowds and slip past watchful eyes, an unseen hunter among the people. From capital cities and villages, to the dense forests and rolling hills of England. Exploration is vital to keeping yourself sharp. You must feed off the land if you hope to endure. Hunt and forage to replenish your health and fortify your equipment. Search pagan temples and Roman ruins for new activities and challenges to strengthen yourself and your settlement. The more you explore, the more of England's secrets you will reveal. Ravens, show no mercy! But as you push deeper into England, the enemy will push back. In a series of climactic moments, Assassin's Creed Valhalla will feature massive assaults in which you will lead Eivor's army into battle against heavily guarded Saxon fortresses. Today, we will reclaim her. Today we fight for your land, and tomorrow we rebuild! For East Anglia. Assassin's Creed Valhalla will transport you to wondrous and haunted lands, inspired by Norse myths and England's pagan roots. It will challenge and surprise Thank you, with unforgettable characters, thrilling triumphs, and tragic losses giving you the chance to live your own Viking saga. Ninth century England is truly unlike anything the franchise has seen before. Assassin's Creed Valhalla will release this holiday season on Xbox Series X, PlayStation 5, Xbox One, PS4, PC, and Stadia. We're close to wrapping up today, but before we go, our CEO, Eve Guimau, is here to share a few words. I hope you will have enjoyed what you have seen today. 
and that you will love playing these games. I'm proud of our teams for delivering an ambitious, broad and creative lineup of games. And we haven't shown you everything yet. In fact, we have a lot more to come. So you will have another Ubisoft Forward to reveal even more about our upcoming games. But before ending this show, we have one more thing to share with you. Fuerzas ultra penetrantes, estamos cansados de los farsantes, de los... It's beautiful, amigo. Perfect, but useless. I have something for you, Diego. Give me your hands. Papa, Now, I... the grenade is simple. It has four basic parts. The shell, which contains the explosive, the fuse, the handle, and of course, the pin. What are you doing? Breathe, Diego. Breathe. The pin simply holds the handle in place. It is only when you let go that this grenade goes boom. Follow me. Now. I am El Presidente, which means that someday you will be El Presidente. And our people, they do not know how to be happy. They are torn apart by opinions, noise, indecision, strangled by their own freedoms. And even if you have love in your heart, even if you want what's best for them, if you only want to save them from themselves, they will hate you, Diego. Everything you say, do believe will be wrong. They will answer you with screams. Call you evil. Monster. 
and give you this. So you tell me, are you evil? like this grenade, except it has two basic parts. Our people. And you. And you must clutch them nice and tight, or we all go. Boom. And with that, we're wrapping up our first Ubisoft Forward. Today, we've seen the next generation of Assassin's Creed, the birth of a resistance in Watch Dogs Legion, the cyber chaos of Hyperscape, and the epic reveal of Far Cry's newest installment, along with so much more. Remember, we'll be back later this year with another Ubisoft Forward filled with tons of game news and updates. Thanks for joining us. Welcome to the Ubisoft Forward post show. My name is Yusuf Nagid, and this is Assassin's Creed Valhalla. We're going to take a deep dive into about 30 minutes of gameplay, and we're joined by a very special guest here. Hey everyone, uh, this is Philippe Bergeron, uh, otherwise known as Fizz. I am the quest director on Assassin's Creed Valhalla. So, Fizz, we're setting up here for what looks like an epic encounter. Tell us exactly what's going on here. Yeah, so here we're midway through the, uh, the quest that we're showing um, for UB Forward. Here we're looking at the assault of Bird Castle. Um, so these are big moments that usually uh, sort of culminate at the end of the story. And so here Avar, or Viking Raider, is taking a group of raiders and ferds into Bird Castle to go and take down Ruid uh, and his clan. So who exactly is Ruid and why does Eivor sort of want to pick a fight with him? Basically Ruid comes into play about halfway through this story arc where at the beginning of the arc, this is something that, that happens before, Ruid basically caused a lot of turmoil within the territory and Oswald, who's the sort of elderman to be to inherit this territory, needs your help to take him down. Oswald having just been defeated in a previous quest and so here this is revenge but also accomplishing your ultimate goal. So Fizz, as you're talking, we're seeing some of the combat of Valhalla. Can you tell us a little bit about the changes to combat this time around? We wanted to uh, basically add a lot of new mechanics to it. So we added like some dual wielding for the player, like a stun system in there. It, and we really needed to do this to sort of portray that sort of the brutality that comes with being a Viking in the same nature. It sort of fits into that uh, the time uh, and the character. Oswald, he lives. Oswald lives! Eivor, is that you? Shut your ass, twig spine. Here, Eivor has taken her entire army through the assault, and finally, it's revealed that our, our elderman, our ally, Oswald, is still alive, and Ruid has him captive. So this is what it comes to, Wolfkist? He's fighting over a filthy Saxon whore, son? If this swine is your prize, Come and get him! Take 
So now that we've seen that Oswald is alive, we have Ruid within our sights. Uh, what's the next step here? So the next move for Eivor is to finally uh, face off against Ruid. She has her allies. They can take care of the rest of the army. Now it's time to go one-on-one -on -one against Ruid in one of our boss battles, actually. Your battle is not dead one, Oswald. And it's worth pointing out, actually, that here what we're showing is the player um, going and facing off against Ruid aggressively, but you, we tend to always have a to support a 360-degree approach in these things. So the player could have approached us a little bit more stealthily and gotten at least like a good critical hit on either Ruid or his wolf, and so you can play this a little bit more strategically if that's your play style. So we're not only fighting Ruid here, but also his pet wolf, right? You're one of the, my preferred strategies is to eliminate the wolf first, just focus fire on him. It takes at least one opponent out of the combat. Now Ruid will have extra abilities that come into play if you do eliminate his wolf. Um, but I think having one opponent less in the battlefield makes for a good strategy. <sighs> Only the cold dark of Niflheim awaits you. Valhalla is my destiny. That thing will not be met today. Why does they should be roomed, Wolfkist? Made thralls, not treated as equals. We are better than this, than all of them. Do not drag me down to the sewage you wallow in. I just had gained my tooth and nail for a second. You'd throw in with these wastrels, these Argir swine? Eivor, no! He should be tried before God, a lawful assembly. <laughs> All right, so we've defeated Ruid, we freed Oswald. What comes next? I won't have Oswald, in this case, prefers for Ruid to be kept alive. And so you basically have to choose, are you going to go against his witches or t stay true to your nature? So we have this choice to make, but before we get into that, I want to rewind a little bit because we just did this big grand assault, but Eivor couldn't have done it alone. Uh, she clearly had to recruit some folks along the way, get some troops, get some allies. So let's actually rewind and see how we went about first gathering those troops. Right, so when coming up to an assault, it's a game of numbers. Eivor can go into pretty much any location and be uh, a stealthy Viking, eliminating some of the assets, which ultimately would be a strategy. You can do that, and you'll have some um, some of the ingredients or uh, of the assets there that will have been sabotaged, but you still need an army. So here what we're seeing is Eivor going around the countryside and raising what we call a third, which is the men and the women of the territory who come up and fight in the name of a king. So here, Eivor is going around Around and try and convince people to fight in the name of Oswald to finally take down the oppressor that is Ruid. Defending East Anglia, defending you. Will you not do the same? What? Die in defense of a last cause? Yeah, so she's really using like the, the image and like the the leadership that Oswald have, what he meant to the people in his name. She's going to recruit these people. Pretty words, Dane. But the men of Theovard have their own battles to fight. So we're told by this Reeve that there are troops, there are allies that he could add to our cause, but first we sort of need to do him a favor, is that right? Yeah, so um, obviously these people have been run down by Ruid and uh, the, the impact he's had on the territory, so I think a lot of these people have sort of lost hope. And so you need to show them that there is hope. And so here Eivor is basically helping them take back one of their, their prize locations um, by taking a couple men and raiding a nearby um, township basically taking it back for the people and showing that there's there's a reason to continue fighting and then get them on your side and then get them on your side
when Eivor does this, obviously you have access to a full suite of abilities. So again, the improvements that we've done to the fight system. Um, you have some brutal axe throwing in there. You have archery or like a range combat abilities in there as well. Um, so really, again, like depending on what your play style is, you can customize your loadout and go in there um, how you wish. Fizz, we just saw this giant pulse go out. What exactly was that? So that is actually this is what we call the Odin Sight. The Odin Sight is basically our interpretation of the um, the Eagle Vision from previous games, and we thought it was good to sort of bring that back. It's basically Eivor's intuition. It's how she perceives the world. When player uses that, you can it'll highlight basically interactive objects, like things that will bring her an advantage. So we'll have arrows, cons um, like health consumables that are in there. So it really is like a good way of sort of understanding the world and showing you like things that you can go and touch. Yeah, I mean, speaking of things we can touch, we just picked up this awesome new weapon. It's something we wanted to play with on Assassin's Creed Valhalla, where we have fewer weapons in the game, but you can invest in them more. So they become your weapon. And so depending what your preferred play style is or your preferred weapon type then you can go and choose I'm gonna I'm gonna fight with this weapon and invest heavily into that not only are we looting weapons but we see something here called the book of knowledge can you tell us a little bit more about that they unlock skills for the players. So here you can see the Valkyrie dive that has just been unlocked we have these spread out throughout the world so again to promote exploration and discovery as you travel through the world and you explore locations, you can find these books that will add abilities that you can go and invest in, put into your loadout, then go into the different locations with the different uh, quests in the game and use those depending on what your playstyle is. Now we've recaptured this village, we've secured more troops for our assault. Let's jump back now and figure out what we want to do with Ruid. The rightful king of East Anglia has spared your life today, and so it will be. Compassion is a virtue suited for anyone, Eivor, including you. Thank you. Eivor decided to let him live. Ruid is really angry about that. Being a Norse Viking, being put to the death in battle is your road to Valhalla. So he was basically denied access to Valhalla in this situation. Obviously, all of these decisions come into play later on in the game. So we have very difficult decisions for the player to make. We didn't want to have easy uh, decisions. Yeah, you know, when I was playing, I, I decided to listen to Oswald and spare Ruid's life, but what exactly is the relationship like between Eivor and Oswald? So the relationship between Eivor and Oswald is is, is an alliance. It's uh, basically Eivor is surrounded by territories um, that initially getting into England are hostile towards her. And um, obviously, if you want to set up a new settlement, you want to have make sure that your neighbor is friendly. Um, so here in East Anglia, Oswald is the man for the job where putting him into a position of power would help her sort of secure her territory. Um, so earlier on to the territory, uh, Eivor comes in here, meets Oswald. The problems he had with Ruid are sort of put to light, and going through the arc, you basically help him deal with Ruid and, and aligning basically Danes with Saxons in one uh, territory. So Fizz, we've completed the assault, we've gotten our hands dirty with some combat, taken down Ruid. We have this big open region of East Anglia, so before we head off to Oswald's wedding, what do you say we head out, have some fun, and see what we can get into in the open world? That sounds great. So we see a cat here with a speech bubble above it, and you best believe if you let me talk to a cat, I'm gonna talk to a cat. Yeah, these, these are some of our... Um... Some of my favorite moments actually in the game where we put in, put out a whole bunch of events throughout the territory. Um, and it sort of rewards, again, exploration, going around. It's a, it's a sh chance for us also to sort of showcase a different side of Eivor. A lot of the quests sort of deal worth more with like politics and warfare, and this shows a slightly more human nature to her. Uh, so it permit us to explore that character a little bit more. And so here, basically, like you're, you're trying to help a kid with his cat and ultimately get that 
cat to sort of join your crew uh, as a cat raider. You just said cat raider way too casually. You're telling me I could have a cat Viking raider on my longship? That's that's exactly what I'm telling you. Oh my god, yes. I love it. Perfect. <laughs> So yeah, as, as you're riding around the, the, the rivers of England, you would see a cat basically walking around your longship, keeping your Viking raiders company. You know, speaking of the Viking longship, we're seeing some of that gameplay here now. Can you talk a little bit about how that works and functions in Valhalla? Yeah, so, so starting out on this project, um, I think the Viking longship is one of the, the biggest images that we all have when we think about Vikings in our game. And so Vikings had this this awesome designed for longship that had a very shallow hull, so it permitted them to go very far inland very quickly, and you could basically disembark uh, Viking raiders like on pretty much any shore. We added that into the game where you can basically s uh, sail up to any location and then just decide to disembark with your guys and raid a location, loot all his treasure, get back in the ship, and then continue really, uh, sailing down the river um, to your next opportunity. So I know past Assassin's Creed games allowed for songs and things like that to be sung on ships. Will Valhalla have a similar version of that? Yeah, so this is something we, we actually wanted the the crew of your ship to become like your, your home away from home. So we added stories and songs into uh, the ship. So basically, as the player is going around, you could decide to have your skull sort of sing a song for you as you row down the river. But you can also decide, depending on who the raiders are in your ship, to hear more about their life. So you can actually queue up stories, and they'll give you a little bit more background on who they are. So you get to know your your sort of fighters as you're traveling around the world, which is a cool um, moment. So here we're seeing a bit of a different view. What exactly are we looking at? We had this on, on previous assassins where you would like ride on, on your horse and you could pull out, have the, ro the, the horse sort of follow the track. We have a similar thing for the ship where you can put up your sails, it's cruise control for the ship, so you can pull back, take in the scenery, listen to some songs or some stories, and just take it all in. So, you know, speaking of Viking songs, we have an activity here that's not exactly singing, but kind of related, right? Yeah, so here what we have is what we call flighting, which was an activity that Norse people would partake in. They would like to have a battle of wits and, and sort of poetry where insults would be thrown back and forth between each other. The idea was to try and have a good insult, um, but also to have a good rhythm and a good rhyme in there. So it, it's basically a precursor to rap battles. Here's the silver. Now begin. To all those whom I speak, they say Eivor's a clod. Then you're speaking to fools and their knowledge is flawed. Well... How exactly do you go about being successful in one of these? The, the trick behind a good flight was to choose the right insult, um, identifying the right cadence, and then trying to find what rhymed the best. I'm known for my might. Interesting. Interesting. Silent whispers all claim that you're terribly dense. Then you've clearly mishurt them. My wit is immense. Oh, you looked out with that one. Well, what a surprise. Eivor of the Raven Clan is a true talent. I'm shocked. Don't believe everything you hear, unless it touches on my flighting. Then heed every word. Take the coin. So now that we've proven our sharp tongue and wit, uh, I think it's time for a bit more relaxing activity. So we're, we're fishing here. Yeah, that's it. Um, so... We gave Eivor a fishing line, so you can actually throw out a line and, and go catch some fish. Um, this is used basically to, uh, uh, to play into our new health loop where the player will lose health in, in the world and it doesn't automatically generate, regenerate like we would have in the past. So you actually have to go out and get some, some supplies. So you'll find mushrooms uh, and some food that you can gather. But here, like, we, you, you can also catch some fish and consume that to regain some health. If we also so, will sometimes have it in, in certain quests. So it's a good way to sort of chill out on the side of the, uh, of the water and just, again, take it all in.
So this is what we call one of our offering altars. So the idea is that you, you find these around the world and you make offerings to it. So it'll take like animal parts and stuff that you can find throughout the world. Here, what you're seeing though, is sort of like a, a fancy version of it, where as you do your offering, you get interrupted by some, some kids that basically come and steal your stuff. So it was just a way for us to sort of showcase that, like the some systems concept. and the activities in the world can sort of play in with Bring some footprints. some quests and some little events. So it's our way to sort of dress up these moments and make it all fit inside the, the whole experience. Yeah, this seemed like a really sort of unexpected turn for what I thought was going to be kind of a simple interaction. Yeah, and it's really what we were trying to do with these events is to is to give another dimension to Eivor, other than just, you know, the pure rar Viking or the politician. Because you can imagine at some point that will we'll grow old if you're always telling that, that, that version of the character. So it, it lets us really go into the depth of who is Eivor, uh, what motivates her, how she can interact with the world outside of uh, warfare and politics. And it also showcases like a, a different facet of the world at the same time. It's not only Eivor. So it, it just winds the breadth of the stories that we can tell. So who exactly are these two children? These are kids of East Anglia. They are going through tough times um, with whatever Ruid's been doing to the territory. And so they're just here trying to survive and and basically exploit the people that are there to make offerings. It was kind of nice to see that Eivor wasn't really necessarily upset at them for stealing. And, you know, after you talk to them, you have the choice of helping them. You can, you know, give them food, give them some money, um, or, you know, maybe just say, hey, good luck on your way. Yeah, and then this is something we also wanted to do a lot. Like, so here we're doing an event, we do it in quests as well. But we want to do, we want to give a lot of this agency into players' hands so that they can sort of shape Eivor a little bit. Um, uh, who she is, so it represents them a little bit more, and they can role play that a little bit uh, better. And again, it just gives her like a little bit more humanity in these in these moments. Provide for small walkers. Here, large walker. A necklace. Yes, it's a Saint Martin seal. You're welcome here anytime, large walker. You're one of us now. Visit us, okay? I will. Take care now, small green walkers. So I think AC veterans might recognize this here, but uh, what exactly is Eivor chasing down? Yeah, so here you're seeing Eivor um, running down one of our tattoo uh, images. So this is challenging the player on free run abilities but also for fans of the series sort of pulling at their heartstrings for some beloved features. <laughs> so are we going to be able to tattoo Eivor? Yes. By collecting these tattoos, you actually bring them to, back to your settlement, and then you can customize different body parts, having different tattoos everywhere. So again, another form of expression and sort of to represent that, Vul that Viking culture. Fizz, one of my favorite things when I was just out there exploring East Anglia was coming upon a house or a building and realizing that there was a chest inside, but that there was no easy way in. And in this case, I saw all the doors were barred, but I knew that because there was a chest in there, there must have been some way to get inside. Uh, so I went around the back and, you know, found a way in. Yeah, I'm glad you actually caught on to that. You're pointing at something that we wanted to work on a lot on Valhalla, where we wanted the exploration to make you feel smarter. So we, we played a lot with puzzle solving. So making sure that every house that you find sort of appeals to you, like it draws your attention. And then when you want to come and explore, it's not it's not given to you. You still have to work for a little bit. So it'll challenge you on your observation skills, um, logic, just trying to find how do I get into this? So we play a lot with uh, level design, quest design to offer challenges to players. And if you basically come out of it like with a better feeling for the exploration, but you also get to see more of a story behind any of these locations which we've crafted so it, it gave us a little bit more time to sort of slow down the experience and and tell a different version of a story a poor victim of someone's fury 
Yeah, I mean, speaking about exploration and just finding things out in the world, I was just wandering and came across this clearing and found this kind of morbid altar. Yeah, so this is this is one of our bigger events that we we have um, scattered in the world. So as Eivor explores, um, she can find um, altars like this, and by interacting with them, here it's a trap that's been set um, for by by this character named Regan. Um, now there's a bigger story behind all this. It, it, there's multiple steps to it later on. Um, so this this is one of the moments. Uh, it, it, it permits us to go into a slightly more mystical realm and play with a boss fight that has more magical abilities, if we will, and and basically have this awesome boss fight in the middle of the swamps. And so here, the abilities that you see uh, Reagan using, like, are a little bit on the mystical side of things. What's happening is Eivor at the beginning of that trap is poison, and so she starts sort of hallucinating, seeing the world in a sort of different uh, light and filter. Um, and so that that's sort of what lets us go into this this the the realm of the weird. My rage, spirit of my father's rage, fill me. So we just saw here that Regan belongs to something called the Daughters of Lyria. Yeah, that's correct. By finding the other daughters, you'll get a little bit more backstory on who they are, so we don't want to spoil that too much. But it creates like a, a sort of greater story that is not on the main path in any way, but it, it's still very rich and adds to the lore of this world and actually plays into history. So we just had a really exciting, really intense boss battle. I think it's time for something a little bit more relaxing and calming now. Yeah, it's all, here it's all about pacing yourself with the highs and the lows. So here we have a low chill moment of what we call building a cairn. So Eivor, as she explores the world, will find these sort of meditative areas where you have a, a pile of rocks that you could just stack on one and, uh, on top of another using physics. And I mean, yeah, the, the ultimate goal is to try and get the highest pile of rocks. But really, it's about taking in the sights, um, relaxing, taking a step back and, and build, just building something. Together, we stack stones into cairns. These? Yes. Think of this as a test of mind and wit. Stack the cairn stones high and wide into any shape you like. I mean, you can spend as much time as you want building these things, making them as high as you want, as weird as you want. I I'm sure, like, a lot of these stuff will end up on the internet, like people comparing structures. And the cool thing is that once you've built it and you decide to get out of it, it sort of stays there. And so that's yours, right? And until the moment where you come back and you want to build a new one, it's, it's sort of cool that we were able to, to give that to players to express themselves. At this point in the demo, we've explored East Anglia, we've met some children, we've broken into a house, we've fought a boss, we've built a Karen. I think now it's finally time to go and head off to Oswald's wedding. Yeah, so this is the, this is the moment it's all been building up to. Um, by the moment you get into the territories, territory, sort of like mentioned by Oswald that he's trying to uh, get married with his Dane lady. And so as you go through the arc, um, that's sort of like the underlying thread. Really, it's about Ruid creating turmoil in the uh, territory and helping Oswald sort of um, get above that and, and show that he's a good leader. And so you finally, after going through all of that arc, uh, finally get these two together, go through their their, we their wedding, and you're invited to attend the ceremony. Um, and then all the uh, activities and fun times that comes afterwards. Yeah, as much as we've seen the brutal side of England, we it's nice to see you know the joyous side of it as well. Yeah, and it's something we really wanted to, to play on in, in Valhalla, where being a Viking is not only about being a raider or a warrior, 
I mean, there's revelry, there's feasting, there's partying that goes, and like if if someone knows how to party, it's a Viking. And so here, this is one of our opportunities to sort of show that, show what a, a sort of Viking gathering is. And what's cool here is it's a it's a good alliance of. Norse culture with Saxon culture, sort of smashing those th two things together um, and building bridges. Yeah, I mean, what's a wedding without some drunk archery, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, so like, anything can happen in a in a Viking event, right? Eivor, yeah, here, here, just get drunk, some sh shoot some arrows. Ah, oh, barely a challenge. Steady all, and ready yourself for the wedding race. The king and his bride against all! My king! He... <laughs> so here we see the decision I made to spare Ruid came back to bite us. Yep, that, that's the decision you made uh, coming back. Um, so uh, as we said before, all of your decisions have consequences and this is a big one. I challenge you. I accept. You're basically presented with the option to sort of step in for Oswald, Oswald fight the fight for him, or let him go and fight his I own fight. fight yeah, you know, personally, I chose to me. fight myself because I, I thought Eivor is the type of person who likes to finish what she started. Plank by plank, and a dead king cannot keep his oaths. Let me finish this. Oswald, you gutless Irish swine! I'll slay the wolf kissed, then hang you with your own tongue. How does this encounter with Ruid differ from our previous fight with him? Uh, so at this point, you've eliminated his wolf, so it's just him. And so he he's angry at this point, and so he will start using his, his big gun abilities, like, fairly earlier on in the fight. Um, so it's way more vicious, way faster. Um, there's less strategy. He goes literally swords blazing at you um and so th this is a fight to the death And of course here, like, this is a decision you made to go and fight him, but there's multiple outcomes to this scenario. You could have let uh, Oswald fight his own fight um, and prove basically his station as, as the rightful leader. Um, if you had eliminated Ruid, obviously this would not have happened. It would have been a slightly more joyous occasion. Um, but ultimately, in all scenarios, you still have an alliance with Oswald. He's proven to be um, the right leader for this territory um, and to be a good ally for you. I promised you an alliance, and now you have it. And one day I will need you to make good on that alliance. So we're about to take off from the wedding, but Eivor decides it's a good idea to check up on her friend Finner. Yeah, so Finner, Finner is probably one of the more recurring characters in, in this arc. You get to meet him very on. He's a very endearing character, um, sort of used to have a Viking life, sort of misses it, and going through all these adventures together is sort of like... Uh, lights that fire back and so he's he's willing to join you in your raiders um so he's one of many raiders that you'll you'll encounter in the game and you can sort of recruit bring back home and then have them sort of join you on your adventures on the on long ship he can tell you these stories that we're telling you about you get a little bit to know a little bit more about him um so again it's a fun way to sort of discover more about these characters that you meet and bring him along for adventures together together I'll gather my things. Well, folks, we've come to the end of our Assassin's Creed Valhalla playthrough. Fizz, thank you so much for joining us. When and where can people play it? Assassin's Creed Valhalla will be out on Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5 and is coming to Xbox One, PlayStation 4, PC, and Stadia on November 17th. Everybody, thanks for joining us. My name is Eric Pope. I'm the senior community developer on Hyperscape. And I'm Graham Jennings. I'm the senior producer on Hyperscape. Hyperscape's now in its open beta phase, so you can go to Uplay and download it directly.
So a little while back, we recorded a match for you so we could walk through it moment to moment, explain what's going on throughout a match of Hyperscape. There's a lot going on with hacks, guns, the gameplay. So Graham and I are gonna walk you through it right now and I hope you'll enjoy. So the start now, you'll see the insertion phase. Uh, there's the three of them in the squad, so they're trying to decide on where they want to go. It looks like Helios, which is one of the landmarks, is going to be one of the choices. So all the places we're seeing on the map right now with like a name above it, that tends to be a higher loot area, would you say? For one of the, the big yellow letter ones like this one, this is one of the landmarks. Landmarks tend to have a higher density and higher quality loot overall. Which also means most people will be going there, so you might have usually have a few more friends uh, if you go to a landmark. <laughs> so in this case though, he's gone outside and he's found a supply crate. So he's starting to loot these instead. So he's looking for both hacks and weapons. With their guns. Right, so the looting phase, uh, many folks will be familiar with, but in Hyperscape, you do have those supply crates that you're, you may be lucky enough to find. And what's the, deal, what's the deal with supply crates? So supply crates are placed around the world. So you'll hear them and then you can go and find them. And then inside them, you'll find uh, weapons and hacks. Usually, uh, you find slightly better weapons and hacks within them. Here now, we've switched, so we're looking at Chimera instead. Uh, so he's in the landmark, he's in Helios now, and he's still in the looting phase. But as you can see from the red triangle up there, there's actually some friends, or not friends, in there with him just now. Yeah, so the action gets uh, started, okay, right here. Yeah, so he's one-on-one, -on -one. he's going with the Mammoth Shotgun uh, against someone who's using the heal hack at the minute, which is the, the red sock that you can see. So that player's taking extra health at that point which looks like it helped him uh, hold his ground against that mammoth. And I believe it helped him survive at that point. There seems to be a few other players in here just now, so the combat started and then Elimination's got his first kill. Oh no, so uh, he's just been eliminated actually. Yes. Yeah. So, so he just, uh, he's been eliminated and he's turned into an echo now. So he's gonna wait for his friends um, to bring him back. So he's gonna go to one of these restore points, which are basically places where someone else from another squad has been eliminated. And you can be restored and brought back to life at one of those points. So the action pretty much never stops in the game. If, you, if you're eliminated, you're not out. You can inform your squad as to what's going on and then you can call to be restored at one of those points. There's plenty of people, like you said, who ended up at Helios at the end. There's at yeah. least three <laughs> other squads. So we can also see when you have a teammate who needs a revive, it's called out on your... Uh... Yeah, the green icon you can see at the side is him uh, calling for a revive at this point. So Mr. Gomi's busy uh, eliminating other players, uh, which will cause more revive points to appear as well. This guy's low on health, so I don't think he's going to last long yet. Okay, so I see once someone's eliminated, they drop a revive point that you can use. What you'll actually see at the minute now is both Chimera and Elimination are both echoes, so it's just Mr. Gomi by himself at present time. So can he survive this and get on. through? <laughs> so he's going again. There's still, there's still a few other players in here, that's for sure. So that was the slam hack he used there. So basically he projected himself up in the air. He landed, he dealt some damage, and he's managed to eliminate the yeah, other player. Yeah, he got the elimination with it, which is pretty good. And then he's starting to bring back uh, Chimera at this point. So he's now back into the game. Right. So he's got to reloot and find new weapons again, because when you are eliminated, you go back to just your melee weapon. OK, so you don't hold on to your gear when you, when you get eliminated. No. So this is the start of the K you can see. So you see all these blue triangles that appear. And this is how we basically do, you know, map size uh, reduction and zone reduction to bring players towards a smaller map into the center. So instead of having a, you know, a circle that shrinks, we've decided to actually dissolve the map. And is it kind of the same? Will you always know which which uh, districts are decaying first? You can see from the uh, from the map when you bring it up what's going, and you'll also see the icon when he turned on the left hand side of the screen a second ago, which shows you where the safe area to go is. So at the top, it will show you sector is closing, and then you've got the little icon of the person running with a distance against it that tells you where to go to the next safe place. So I see Mr. Gummy has pinged that spot to sort of regroup outside of the uh, landmark. We're going to take some uh, height as well to start to be able to look for other players and to keep themselves a little bit safe. So he's seen another player, so he's starting to throw salvos at him, and probably the guy breaks up too. Yeah. You see the red uh, exclamation mark? That's basically his teammates pinging and saying, hey, there's an enemy over here. And he's been shot out from behind, so there's def definitely players around. You'll see him going to go high again to try and take some positional advantage. Um, to get up because he knows, he knows there's another team on the roof up there. He doesn't want to be below them, especially not with a salvo grenade. 
But what I'm noticing is that they're doing a good job of switching from street level to the, the, the rooftops. Is that kind of a good way to approach a, a game of hyperscape, to not just stay in one area? You should really use the variety between streets, interiors, and rooftop for navigation and to keep yourself safe. Rooftops are great to see what's going on, but you're also then a target for the snipe. So you really need to adjust. Uh, Great to see what's going on, but you're also then a target for the snipe. So you really need to adjust uh, height uh, and interior, exterior as you go, just to keep yourself safe. And to aggressively loot too, to find the best stuff. So he just picked up a golden skybreaker. What does the gold mean? That is the top tier of skybreaker. So basically, you can have a level five skybreaker, which is what he just picked up. We will fusion weapons together. So if you have a skybreaker and you find another skybreaker, it will go to level two. Find another one, it will go to level three. And what he has now, as you can see in the bottom uh, bar there with the yellow, he has the top tier of the skybreaker, so this does more damage. So you, each time you fusion something, a weapon or a hat, it will go up in various different um, abilities. So you're basically, just, just to loot up, to fuse up, you just need to find a duplicate of your weapon or hat. And that's all. Yeah. So you'll see though on the left, uh, when you see the other players' names, you can see that uh, Mr. Gomi has two uh, yellow weapons and a yellow hack. So he has two fully fused weapons and one fully fused hack. Warning. How does healing Sectors work in this game? So healing will either work by I took damage and then I retreated and your health bar will come back up. Or if a player has a heal hack, which he actually does at present time, so you see that in the bottom it says heal, he can throw that on the ground and then there'll be an AOE of heal, so both you and your teammates can come into it and it will heal you. And enemies cannot heal up in that same AOE? They can't heal up in your AOE, but they could also use the heal hack themselves if they wish. Cool. So you see them now, they're starting to hunt again. I guess I've heard some other players, because you can see them starting to move around and there's a... There's a sense that they're not alone at this point. And there's a ping for an enemy, so yeah, the combat started again. So this guy finds himself in the middle uh, of a bunch of, uh, of the three players, so he's oh. not in the best spot just now. Oh, and yeah, that's the end of it. <laughs> So if you manage to fusion uh, one of his hacks then again. So here you'll see the decay started. The player found himself out in the decay as it was starting. He had no cover left. So you find yourself out in the open and the, uh, they eliminated him with a ripper at that point. And another one down for elimination. He seems to be uh, on a roll at this point. And now he's fully fused his sniper rifle, the protocol V. Still quick check, just make sure there's no one else coming in. You don't want to have someone behind you at the last minute. So there's still five teams left. Uh, and then we'll swap back to Mr. Gomi, who's still uh, rolling with the Skybreaker at this point. It's worked out well for him. Yeah. The case starting to happen in this region too, so it's starting to move forward a little bit. They have a nice variety of weapons between them. You know, there's a, someone's got a salvo, there's a skybreaker, there's a ripper. They really split in terms of hacks and weapons, so they have a nice diverse uh, selection in terms of games. So see him go up high now, he's probably going to use a skybreaker. And he has, and that's the end for uh, Takeshi uh, Casualing. Takeshi Casualing, so now you mentioned that username. You'll notice if you've been watching the, the feed, uh, the usernames all seem pretty similar in this match. What's, what's the story with that? So this is the feature we call streamer protection. So uh, it allows you to anonymize who's in the game. So exactly what you can see now. This poor player has managed to find themselves in the corner and tried to hide. Unfortunately, they've been chased in there by someone with a, a fully fused salvo. So uh, that, that was kind of the end for them. Dangerous. So they've swapped now and they've gone to uh, the Mammoth and stuff. So they've swapped out to the shotgun. So it's quick to change your playstyle. You can easily find another weapon you like and you can adjust based on map size, how many players are left and continuously adjust. And that countdown that just finished was a health kit event. What, what does that mean? What are these events? That so are basically happening? in the top right now, you'll see the cross and it's kind of ticking down. So this is said that this is the time left for the health kit event. Basically, every match, uh, there will be cards played, which change what happens in the match. So this was the health kit event. There's things like low gravity 2, which projects up in the air, and you can jump over. And are these just random, or uh, are players triggering these events somehow? So there's two different ways this happens. So there's a Game Master, Grace, who plays them in, in this case. Or if there's a streamer in the game, the streamer's viewers will get the chance to vote for which one they want to see. So it'll pop up. There'll be three different options. 
and then whichever gets the highest number of votes will be the one that's played in the game. So viewers are directly impacting uh, the streamers. And that's through the, the Crowncast extension? Through the Crowncast uh, Twitch extension, cool. yeah. So here uh, you see that, that you got caught in the decay then and fell through the building, so trying to move back in. There's, there's only three teams left now, so we're starting to get towards a smaller map size, so it's going to become a chaotic shortly. And they're just on the edge of this landmark. Of Red Tiger, so they're heading up. Here you'll see at the top it says Crown appears in 10 seconds. So basically we have a crown that spawns in the wall. If a player grabs the crown and manages to hold onto it for 45 seconds, he will win that game through what we call crown victory. The only downside to that is once you've picked up the crown, everyone can see where you are and everyone's going to chase you. So yeah, he's got the crown, the countdown is on. As soon as, if he were to get eliminated, it would drop and that countdown would go away. Right? Yes, and then whoever picks it up next, that person, uh, the countdown will start again for them. And that's only one of the two ways you can win a match in Hyperscape, right? Yeah, you can win via the crown if you want to take it and maneuver. This is why you'll see the really high up uh, to own, own the higher space. Or you can eliminate all the other teams. You could sneak around and, and grab that crown and survive. Left to stop the crown if you use your hacks well and you use your movement and uh, hide a lot, then yeah, you could possibly grab the crown, get to the end, and then win via a crown victory. Wow. There it is. A screen I'll never see. <laughs> All right, well, that was just one match of the frenetic fast-paced game. Hyperscape that we are both very lucky to work on. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for watching UB Forward in this post-show. As we mentioned before, the game's available right now in open beta on PC. Just go to Uplay to download it. And we're also thrilled to be taking part in the Twitch Rivals event with the information appearing magically on the screen below us. So, Graham, thank you for your time. Thank you, Eric. Have a good day. And we'll see you in the Hyperscape.